Hey, GearHeads, it's Jeff with Gear Report. It's Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern on the East Coast. That means it's time for this week at Gear Report, where we talk about all of the articles and reviews that have been published since the show this time last week, and also about upcoming things that are in the review queue on the way, on the horizon, or in some other way haven't happened yet. Uh, we actually have a few things to talk about this week. First, I'd like to do a couple things. Number one, thank you, Riton Optics, for sponsoring this week at Gear Report. They covered uh, the cost of allowing us to stream on multiple platforms, which is very much appreciated. Um, let's see. Thank you to TJ, who covered for this week at Gear Report the last few weeks while I was on the trail backpacking. Uh, without even a cell phone, like absolutely no connection to the real world um, outside of, you know, my feet on the ground and putting hands on things. So uh, TJ, thanks so much for filling in and covering this week at Gear Report. Ruben stopped by a few times. A few other people stopped in. Uh, I know uh, Jeremy from down south off-road and outdoor uh, stopped in at one point. Probably a few other people Everyone who participated and helped TJ out when he was running the show, thank you very much. All right, it looks like, oh, it kind of looks like we're only broadcasting on YouTube. Uh, it looks like I forgot to start the Facebook Live broadcast as well. So uh, it's already rolling, so this is what we get today. All right, uh, TJ pinged me a little while ago and said he is stuck at work. He's going to try to get in, but he didn't think he was going to make it. That probably means I am flying solo tonight. So why don't we dive into our regularly published agenda for this week at Gear Report. The first thing, numero uno, that we talk about, recently completed reviews. We actually have a few this week, so um, and they, they relate to where I have been. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I know we have some other things in the queue uh, that I've worked on and a few things that TJ has been working on, but let's talk about uh, where I was the past few weeks. I made another pilgrimage to the Philmont Scout Ranch. This is a, a high adventure base operated by the Boy Scouts of America. It's in Cimarron, New Mexico, and uh, the mountains out there are phenomenal. Base camp is at 6,500 feet. The highest peak is a, a little bit over 12,000, maybe 12,400 12, feet, something like that. So a lot of elevation, a lot of up and down, a lot of mountains and valleys. And I spent uh, 12 days there on a backpacking trip. Actually, when you count, the, we got there a little early, 13 days plus travel. It was a two-week trip. Uh, so we were out there for a while. 11 of those days we spent on the trail and hiked uh, probably, I'm going to guess overall, about 80, 85 miles total uh, backpacking, carrying everything we needed with us on our backs. So while I was out there, before the actual uh, trek started, I went around to various departments there at Philmont and uh, through their marketing director, uh, met with some of the head people in each department to film some promotional informational videos about different programs that they have. So if you know someone who is involved in scouting and has an interest in horses and cattle and ranch operations and being a cowboy or being a wrangler or a cowgirl for that matter, um, which, which I will note, I only heard cowboy mentioned. It was a woman that I interviewed. So I think they just generically call everyone cowboy and they're not gender specific uh philmont ranch hands trek info is what we call this uh, short article the article doesn't have a ton of information because the bulk of it is in the video that's embedded there so you can check out this video and see where uh, i interviewed jessica who provided lots of information about the ranch hands program and uh who can participate and uh, you, you see a lot of details in here on, uh, I mean, this is only for scouts age 16 to 18. Once they get past 18, they want them to come out and work as wranglers, not come into a trek. But they work for a week at the cattle operation or out at the various uh, backcountry bases, uh, leading trail rides and that, helping take care of the animals. And then when that week of work is done, they take them out on a seven-day trek in the backcountry 
uh, themselves, which is a really, really cool, interesting thing. You can see I didn't do this. I'm too old to do it, but I did ride a horse while I was out there. So I, I include a little bit of footage in there of that. And uh, we'll get to those little promos later. And it was kind of interesting that, uh, where, where was the footage here? As we were wrapping up the video, oh, here we go. This uh, little stubborn horse decided to walk right in the middle of what we were doing. Uh, I don't know why, but it did. And uh, yeah, that was kind of interesting to me as someone who's not incredibly comfortable with horses. So if you have any interest in this program or you know anyone, especially a youth in the 16 to 18 age range, or maybe even a little bit younger, kind of prime the pump for them, give them some information where they can go check out about this program, then please head over to Gear Report and find Philmont Ranch Hands Trek Info, the article with the embedded video, and check that out. All right. So we're going to move off of that one. And uh, why don't we move in to the next article? Similar, you know, I had uh, a few of these, and I have one that I have not published yet that were interviews that I did with folks while I was there at Philmont Scout Ranch. This one is with their conservation department. This dude's name is Robert Fudge. Yes, that's his name, Fudge. Um, and I believe he probably has heard every joke in a book about his name. So it didn't even phase him. Uh, not that I said too much about it. But this talks about four different programs. The Order of the Arrow Trail Crew Trek. The regular Trail Crew, tr trail crew Trek. The Rocks Treks. That is Roving Outdoor Conservation School. And then they have one called the STEM Trek. Which STEM, you know, getting to be kind of a common acronym for... Uh, uh, oh, what is STEM? See, I'm blanking on STEM now. Science, technology, I don't remember. Uh, if you know, leave a comment because I, I seem to be blanking on it right now. I could watch the video where Robert describes the various different things in their program. Uh, but, you know, we're trying to uh, we're trying to keep this show moving. So I'm not going to watch the whole thing here. But you can see um, this was really... Uh, just all the background information to help people figure out, is this something I'd like to do? If it's someone who's thinking of working at a scout camp, especially out there at Philmont Scout Ranch, the uh, conservation department, different treks are a generally a combination of you're doing some work and you're getting a trek out of it, either free or at reduced cost. And they have sometimes scholarships and and other ways to get out on the trail much cheaper than a traditional Philmont trek, which, by the way, is about 1300 bucks just for the trek. Then you got to travel out there. I'm thinking most people spend between gear and transportation and the um, and the actual fees to Philmont somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, $22 to $2,500. So you go to one of these cons treks, you may not pay anything. You may just pay your travel. Uh, you may and be in for about a thousand bucks overall uh, with a reduced rate and then covering your travel, uh, which is way cheaper than doing the traditional Philmont trek. So uh, if you know any young people that may be interested in that, these are generally for someone 16 to not yet 21. So 16 through 20 uh, for the different conservation department treks. All of them look to be pretty cool in my opinion. And then uh, let's see, we will move on to the last article published was yet another interview from Philmont Scout Ranch, this time with the uh, one of the head Rayado Rangers. Rayado is a high adventure program. This is a 20 day trek for scouts, uh, 15 to 20 years old. They'd have male crews, they have female crews. I don't believe they do co-ed crews. I think they are single sex, single, single gender, whatever we call it, uh, crews that go out for this uh, 20 day adventure that is very customized. You see here, two Rangers, two of the Rayado Rangers, which coincidentally I posted a picture uh, on Instagram and Facebook of these two people, these two rangers, uh, before we hit the trail, probably about the 17th or 18th of June, I posted a picture with these folks. And then 
what would it have been, the 28th, maybe, a few weeks later, we happened to run into them on top of uh, the peak of a mountain. They call it the Tooth of Time. You see, uh, you know, I'm holding the camera and uh, doing a 360 and swept right past these guys. They're like, wait a second, those are the guys that I met in base camp. So the Rayado Trek program is, uh, their motto is expect the unexpected. It is meant to be a big growth opportunity and development uh, personal, spiritual, you know, physical, mental development um, event to change the lives of all the participants. Uh, everyone I know who, who has done it said it was absolutely amazing. It really helped them set the right course for their life. So again, if you know anyone who may be interested in that, please send them to Gear Report to find the Fulmont Rayado Trek info article so you can watch the video and figure out if that's something that they would like to pursue. All right, if you're out there, please leave a comment. We don't know if you're there unless you say something. Um, so let's see. That was recently completed reviews. We have reviews coming soon. I can tell you I've got a couple of guitar reviews that are in the queue that are mostly done, that are getting closer. A whole variety of updated backpacking gear, Philmont gear, uh, I've already made some updates to our uh, best budget backpacking gear for a Philmont Trek. Uh, let me see. I will show that article here. I've made a couple changes to it. I have some more changes that are going to be made in the next few days. So that won't be a new article that gets published. That'll be updates to an existing article based on things that I learned when we were on the trail the last couple weeks. Uh, and I'll tell you, there were some things that were very different from prior treks that I've been on. Uh, some equipment that didn't do as well as I thought. Some equipment that blew me out of the water as far as how well it performed, even though people say it won't do well. Um, which, you know, in this case, I'm really speaking directly to the uh, ponchos for rain gear. A lot of people, you know, hate ponchos and say they don't work. And you know, you're going to get people killed. You should be ashamed of yourself, you know. How do you call yourself a scout leader when you're telling people to wear crappy rain gear like a poncho? Guess what? My crew of 10 people, eight and a half, nine of those people were on the edge of hypothermia after a couple days of rainstorms with a cold snap that came in. Guess who the only one who wasn't suffering from being wet and cold was? The guy in the poncho. So uh, clearly these folks who get upset about... Uh, my gear recommendations, maybe they need to spend a little more time out in the woods actually testing gear and a little less time running their mouth on places like Facebook. I'm just saying. So anyhow, this article has already been updated. I've got uh, a video in the works, a couple more. One is for the two of the time traders, the store at Philmont. They've got a lot of new online options and e-commerce stuff that uh, I hung out with the um, e-commerce manager and shot a video. So that will be posted soon. And also um, the gear rundown. So just like on the last Philmont Trek in 2017, when I got back, I didn't unpack my bag. I intentionally left everything in the bag coming off the trail right where it was. Brought it home in the carrying bag that I pulled it on the airlines, took it out, set it in the back of the Humvee, unzipped it, took it out on camera, went through every item in the bag so you can see where it was stored, how it was used, talked about how it performed. Did it did it surprise me in a good way, a bad way? Would I recommend taking it again? That kind of thing. Uh, that video is, I'm telling you, it's a really fun video to put together. I shot so much video on the trail that um, it, it is really... Um, <laughs> Lone Ranger, huh? Make my drive home interesting. Brother, I'm going to do what I can. And, uh, you know, I was hoping TJ would make it. TJ got a little busy. And, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, this has been the trend lately. I think we're up against some heavy hitters on some other channels. And uh, it's getting a little harder to get people in here to talk with us. I think the solution to that is publishing more content. So we got more interesting things to talk about. And that is exactly what I'm working on right now. So, uh, getting a lot more content out there, like the updated uh, gear rundown uh, for backpacking gear I was just talking about. I've got some uh, guitar stuff that's on the way. TJ's got some gun upgrades, like the uh, from Medieval. He's got the uh, the little twist grip, the the 
I was going to call it a forward vertical grip. I'm not sure if 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 you really call it that because it can be sideways, it can be angled back. I mean, it can be an angled foregrip. It can be a completely sideways grip. I mean, it depends on how you adjust it, I guess. I don't know legally how that's handled. If you know, feel free to leave me a comment unless you happen to be driving, in which case I'd probably prefer you don't type and drive. Uh, anyhow, that is something else that's coming. Um, lot, lots more backpacking gear, some more guitar stuff, because uh, I have had a guitar explosion here at Gear Report headquarters and have a bunch of new stuff on the walls. One of the latest, here's something I'll show you. This, uh, they call this shape the Flying V. This is this was kind of a junk guitar that I bought, and honestly, it kind of still is at this point. It has some uh, EMG active pickups that are battery powered, and one of them is working, but way overdriven. Uh, the other one uh, isn't working at all. What I'm going to do is replace these with some passive pickups um, and, and redo all the wiring and everything. I think what else I'm going to do when I have it apart is sand it all down. It's like a metallic purple that's kind of disgusting. I think this is be going to become desert tan, just like the Battle Wagon 3, you know, the uh, the Humvee that we have here at Gear Report. But I've already, it was really put together poorly. This neck joint had a bunch of space and wiggle in it, and I uh, took it apart, filled the holes, re-drilled them, put the correct screws and a new... Um, backing plate on it to hold everything in snug. I put some brand new locking tuners on it to help with tuning stability and the appropriate uh, little spacers up here to make them fit the holes properly. Uh, everything is coming together. I just have to get the active pickups out, out and get some passive pickups in there and then repaint it. And I may even put like gearreport.com on it or something. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas on that. But that is one of the projects that I've been working on that's actually gone from a pile of parts back here in the corner to uh, a moderately playable guitar hanging there uh, on the wall. This was the last, actually the last guitar that came in. This was like a $20 yard sale pickup that was disgusting. I mean, I had to take it apart and scrub every piece and I put a new... Uh, tremolo bridge on it that uh, actually this one um, it's got a, a heavy brass uh, sustain block and you can see it, it's got quite a bit of movement in it um, that brass sustain block is actually a little too deep the the backing plate won't fit on it so it, it goes open now but uh, I tore it down scrubbed the fretboard and oiled it got it looking nice Got the, uh, the nut lubed up and uh, left the tuners on it. Put a whole brand new set of uh, the Dario strings on it. And it, it actually plays pretty nice. I, I mean, I probably got... Um, the This tremolo was sent for review by a company via Amazon. So I don't have any money in that. I probably got six or eight bucks in the strings in a couple hours and taking it apart and scrubbing it and oiling the neck and putting it all back together and tuning and adjusting and setting the intonation and all of that. And actually I've got it where the action's pretty low and it plays pretty nice. Um, and it actually sounds pretty good. So I may have $35 and a couple hours in it. And I actually kind of dig it. I, I kind of like that guitar. So that is uh, Really, while I was letting my foot heal uh, from being broken, I kind of got wrapped up in rehabbing old guitars, and I find that to be kind of interesting. Did my connection go bad, or did yours? I suspect it was yours, but I don't know. If it was mine, I got no indication of it on this end, so I don't know. Anyhow, what else do we have coming? Uh, I got I got a bunch of these guitars listed for sale. If you see anything up here that you like, feel free to drop me a note and let me know what it is that interests you because some of these need to go. I've got too many. I think I'm up to here's 14 here plus the acoustic electric that's over there. So that'd be 15. I think I probably want to have about five total. So I need to get rid of about 10 of these. And some of those are going to be easy. Like this one, 
was kind of a junk guitar that I picked up that was really not playable. It had uh, the wrong tuners. So I got a set of locking tuners. Um, did this one have locking tuners? I think, okay, it's the other one I'm thinking of. Uh, this one, I may have put these tuners in it. I'm blanking on that, but the nut was completely wrong. So I adjusted that to get it at the appropriate height, set the neck relief, put new strings on it. This also has some active EMG pickups that kind of work sometimes, um, but don't necessarily sound great. So I think I'm going to pull these active pickups out and sell them and then put some passive pickups in here. This is uh, a Les Paul shape and uh this one had the neck had been broken off and really poorly glued back into place. Uh, although, I mean, everything looks straight enough and it plays okay uh, for the most part. So I may pull these pickups and put passive pickups in and uh, while I have it apart, sand it down and refinish it because the finish on it looks like it was done by a, a second grader. Um, or I may just put up for sale the way it is and get rid of it. That would probably be the smarter thing to do, I think. So if, if something like this interests you, I'll make you a deal on this. This will be an inexpensive pickup for you. It actually plays. I was just playing it for about a, about a half hour, uh, an hour or two ago. Um, that one's kind of neat. And uh, I think a few weeks ago, if I can get this to stand up back here. There we go. I wanted to show this one that uh, this was uh, out of that with the same batch as the Flying V and that other Les Paul copy. This was the best of the bunch and it's got three passive pickups. Only two of them are hooked up. I'm not even sure. I got to figure out how to wire it so that all three of them work. Um, and it plays and sounds okay. It's not the best that I have. This one I put a set of locking tuners on. Yeah, the other one had the locking tuners. This, I installed the locking tuners and I got some adapters to make them fit the larger holes that were on here. And these were some Amazon review products that came in. So I got, I, I took basically three guitars that none of them would really play and made each one of them playable. And now I'm trying to decide, do I want to sand this down and refinish it? Cause the finish is kind of crappy. Or do I just want to part with it and get my money out of it, move on to something else? Uh, that's probably what I should do. But anyhow, I'll give you a deal on any one of these. This one is actually, uh, it's a pretty guitar. It's just the finish is a little beat up and not incredibly well done. It, it could really use sanding all over and refinishing and then put it back together and it plays pretty nice and then you know, sort out the wiring for the three pickups so all three work instead of two and that would be a pretty i think inexpensive and fairly easy project for someone so again if you think it's interesting let me know uh let's see what else should we talk about firearms that i have in the queue i know tj has the is it the raging hunter maybe in fourth uh was it 454 Kasul? Whatever, whatever that round is. Um, he's got that in the queue. He's got the TX22 competition. Uh, these are both from Taurus. I've got the Maxim Defense uh, PDX uh, SBR in 300 Blackout. I'm waiting for them to tell me whether they want me to wait on the suppressor to show up or just do the review without it. But I've also got a Taurus... G3 Toro, I believe, which is the Toro Optics Ready option. I think T-O-R-O, -O, Toro Optics Ready option. Um, those are both sitting at quarter horse arms, waiting for me to get some time to run over there and uh, at least put some initial rounds through them and get those reviews done. Um, and, oh man, I don't even know where to start with all of the Humvee stuff that's in the queue. I've got a bunch of stuff to do. The truck's just been sitting for a couple months while I've been busy doing other things. So I'm going to get back to the Humvee content here shortly. Um, I think that's what we got for you tonight. So I appreciate you uh, squandering 25 minutes of your life. You're never going to get that time back, but thanks for sharing it with me here on This Week at Gear Report. Uh, we're going to go ahead and shut it down since, since we're not getting a lot of uh, interaction in the comments. 
and I have covered all of the new content, uh, some of the stuff that's on the way. There's a whole bunch more, but, you know, a bunch of little things, a few big things. Who knows where we're going to go from here? There's so many different options. So uh, I'll tell you what, until next week, I'll see you at the range.